You are listening to episode 92 of the Your Next Chapter podcast. Inspiration, clarity, confidence, and wholehearted growth strategies. Welcome to Your Next Chapter, the podcast especially for women in their 40s and beyond who know that business and personal development go hand in hand. In every episode, I bring you inspiring people, stories, ideas, and lessons from around the globe to help you and your business to flourish. I'm your host, Angela Raspis, and I'm so delighted that you're here. Now, in late 2018, I found a book. Now, if you've followed me for a while, you'll know that's not surprising. I rather love books. But this book had some insights in it that really made me realize that I needed to have a deeper conversation. Now, the book is called Self-Leadership. It's how to become a more successful, efficient, and effective leader from the inside out and jointly written by Andrew Bryant and Anna Cousin. Now, that sounds like a pretty dry title when you hear uh, what the book is about, but diving underneath it, you, I soon recognized that this really helped the ticket, some of the key concepts to help you step into your next chapter. The idea of self-leadership is all about the ability to influence yourself, to think and behave in ways that are consistent with not only who you are, but also to support the pursuit of the goals and experiences that are important and relevant to you, i.e. this is all about next chapters. This is all about stepping into that next version of you. So I knew that I needed to make contact with an author and and have this deeper conversation. And of course, I picked Anna because this really, this podcast really is about women stepping into their next chapters. We love you men, but our experiences can be slightly different. So this conversation with Anna was very deep, very rich, very broad, very wide. It's not only about, well, it's actually slightly about the book because I'd really encourage you to grab it and read it. But it's more about hearing another example of a woman who decided that she wanted different and that it took courage to step into this next version of her. You hear about Anna moving from Brazil across to America, writing over 100 letters, because this was before laptops were really common, to get herself into um, a university where she could study her master's and then actually complete a PhD before going on to be co-author. Now, I want to emphasize that this was a really big next chapter, the second half of her life, as Anna describes it, because it started when she was 39 and she's in her mid-60s now. But what I want you to hear is just the concept of deciding who you want to become and having the courage to step into that, because that very much is the message that Anna is sharing. And yes, the qualities of self-leadership that are inherent within that quest, you have within you as well. So I can't wait for you to hear this conversation and to help it prod you just a little further down the path into your own next chapter. I hope you enjoy it very much. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Your Next Chapter podcast. Thank you for spending your time here with me today. And I am intensely excited about the guests that I have to share with you today. Anna Karzin, I found as the co-author of a book which transfixed me uh, last year. It's called Self-Leadership, How to Become a More Successful, Efficient, and Effective Leader from the Inside Out. Now, that sounds all a little bit heavy when you first hear the title, but when we are diving and delving down into the concepts within this book, epitomized by the life insights that Anna will be sharing with us on this call, you'll understand why I believe self-leadership is so important and what an amazing deep impact it can have on you in your next chapter. Anna, thank you so much for joining me here this morning, all the way from Brazil. Hi, Angela. I'm not sure if it's good evening or good morning. Well, you're in Australia in Brazil, so here is like almost 7 p.m. So, um, yes, uh, it was a, I mean, it, it was awesome to see you, contacting to, to, to get your message, to know that you read the book, that you liked it. Uh, I'm ex- excited as well to find a fellow self-leader <laughs> across the ocean. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it was that was definitely the case, and I too was excited when you accepted my invitation. And I love um, Anna when I'm first talking with people that are guests on the podcast. I love to find out about your previous chapters. I mean, right now you're back in Brazil. You've got all these fantastic qualifications and experience under your belt. But from when I was reading in our quick chat before we started, you actually have a background in journalism where you spent almost 20 years there before you stepped into your own next chapter. So could you? Take Take us back to that point and, and talk to us about you know, why you decided to have the significant change and, and what happened for you. Oh, that's, that's very, that, that's a good story. Uh, women, usually, as we age, we have great stories to tell. I think that may, you may find that true among your, your colleagues, your friends in Australia, but um, mine is not different. So I, I was 39, 38, 39, and I uh, had a divorce, and I thought my life was over, and uh, things were not do going well. You know, I was aging. It, imagine today when I look back, I think, oh, my God, I thought I was aging when I was 38, 39. Imagine that. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I thought I was aging in account to that to overvalues beauty and appearance and youth and all those things. And uh, there was a moment that uh, my children wanted to live with their father, and um, I got this this uh, this desire of changing my life. And I was so bad at that point that I thought, well, if I stay here, I would die because there's nothing else, nothing else I could do. You know, as a journalist, you don't make too much money here. And I was already, I mean, I had, I, I have had a, a good career. And I thought, well, what is the last crazy thing I want to do? And the last crazy thing I want to do before I died at that point, 38, 39 years old, was to go to the United States and get a master's degree. So that was my, my dream. So there I went by myself, very little resources, and started from the very bottom. It was a different time then, 94, that's the year when I went. And uh, I started a, a long move. I'm not sure if you want to need to go through this now. Is that, is that what you well, expect? I, I love hearing the beginning of that story that the courage it took to take the, as we would say here, the bull by the horns and to, to take this leap into this next chapter. So let, let's focus on once you got there, what, what happened? What, when you were talking about doing this postgraduate work, where, did, where was your imagination captured? Where did you decide you wanted to go with this? Well, uh, I wanted a, another life. You know, I um, at that time, you know, Brazil as a South, uh, a Latin American country, um, and this is a common story among the countries here in South America, uh, was going through a difficult phase, economic uh, phase. We had like inflation of like 30 percent a month. Uh, it was difficult uh, of the jobs. There was no, 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 not no increases in salary. Uh, it was difficult to get uh, bank accounts because they were charging too much for the basic services. And my kids were going to live with their father and their father was well, but you know, we're divorced and in different uh, parts of our lives. And um, it was a courage that I tell you, I took from anger of not being happy at that time when I thought I could have my life stable and I didn't have it anymore, didn't happen to me. And it was whether I did this, I went, I, I, I went away or I died. That's my, the feeling I had. I didn't see any other choices for me. I like, so how, I, I like how you um, channeled that feeling of, of anger into action and courage. Exactly. And uh, yes, and uh, you know, it was very clear to me back then, and still today, when I remember, it is strong in me that anger can move you positively. It's not it's not necessarily a bad thing if you're angry. You know, you you, you can you, you 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 can channel anger into doing something that you you overcome, that you excel, that you prove that you are valuable and that you can do it you know it takes courage and it takes also 
the feeling that I always had that I couldn't come back the way I was. So it was the tra- it was the um, the transformation point, which I believe a lot of women hit this point where life at some stage feels very narrow, but suddenly it opens up and it does take that courage to take that next step. I mean, some of us don't take such a large step of leaving the country and going to a whole new place and and settling in to study our masters in communication. That's an enormous leap, but the, the feelings underneath it, that desire for something different, that desire to, to expand our own potential is the same. I think whatever the step is that we choose for us, but I'm really, I'm really curious. When you were there, you you discovered this concept of self leadership. I believe that you read an article when you were studying that sort of um, it showed you that the journey that you were on was the self leadership journey. Could you explain how how that came about? Like what self leadership means to you and why it really sparked you so? Absolutely, yes. So when I were when I went away, as I say, when I left Brazil for the United States, I realized that I was totally by myself. You know, I didn't have the cushion of uh, asking for help from friends or family, nothing. I was extremely criticized. I was even actually uh, uh, shunned by, uh, by a big part of my family. And uh, I heard from many people, it's not going to work, you are crazy, you're going you're gonna to come back wimping. And I was determined, I, I, could, not, I could not hear that it would work. Um, oh yeah, so I, I realized when I was in the United States that I was myself, alone, and for me. And it, I, I started to see that I had to define myself uh, as, I introdu- uh, as, as, I, as I introduced myself to people around me. They asked me, who are you? What you do? What are you doing here? And for me to, to say those things, who am I? I had to think about who was I uh, in a whole different perspective. Because, you know, uh, in the United States, my, this is my experience there, my impression. Is that is people are much more um, 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 uh, to the point. Uh, if they don't mess around, they don't <laughs> play. With words, They're direct. You know, They're very direct. More, di- more direct. Yeah. So I had to redefine myself and take a very good look. I was by myself. My luck or my 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 doom was in my own hands. I didn't have anybody else to blame for my failures, and I had to get get a grasp, you know, grab myself and make it work. So I examine everything. I, I always look at myself from outside, you know, examining myself and rewarding rewarding myself when I did when I finally got my speech together, my discourse together. I was always examining myself, and uh, I went slowly, one foot after another, doing uh, uh, knocking many doors of uh, like scholarships for women, uh, empowerment for women, immigrants alive, whatever. <laughs> I, not, I, I had, I, I, I sent so many letters, and at that time, '94, '95, you if you remember. We didn't have computers. I mean, it was not widespread like it is today. So I wrote by hand over a hundred letters for institutions all over the United States. Went uh, alone by myself to Washington D.C. many times, looking for programs that I would, you know, look. I I went to uh, uh, university libraries to look into funds and trust and endowments and scholarships and everything for women, older women. Can you imagine that when we look back now, 2019, to older women? We wouldn't got to characterize anyone for the 39, 40 years old as an older woman. But anyhow, I had, I, and I had response from those, uh, I, I, I had answers from those institutions. I had a bag full of no's. Very nice nose, you know, no, you can't, I'm sorry, you don't qualify, blah, 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 every possible reason. 
And I had a friend, a woman who, an American woman who I met here in Brazil. We lived in the same city at that time. So when I went there, I chose to stay in Ohio because there, there's where she lived. And she told me, you have to save your money because you're going to have to go back. You're not going to be able to do it, to do the master's degree. And I said, I told her, listen, I, I love you very much. You're a wonderful friend until here. But if I hear you say one more time that I can't, that I won't do it, I have to break up our friendship. And I never heard that she say anything like this again. So wow, one day, Anna, Anna, just coming in for a moment, what I'm hearing here, and I, I absolutely guarantee I'm not alone with everyone who's listening to your story. How did you find that core of determination to have, as you said, you know, I wrote a hundred letters. There were lots and lots of nice lo no's. Now some people will reach a limit and go, well, there you go. It's not supposed to be. Where did you find such a core of determination to keep going? Well, it's so interesting that you ask me that. I, I think because I was alone and I had to prove, I, I you know, I couldn't die over there alone, you know. Um, I lived, for you to have an idea, in a hostel. You know, one of these international youth hostels? Yep. I don't know if the institution exists here, but that was the first place when I arrived that I stayed. And now I, I was able to... Uh, make a deal with the, the manager that if I, if I could sleep there and help in the front desk, I wouldn't have to pay. Look, we are talking about a mother of two. <laughs> a woman <laughs> with a career behind, you know, it's not, and I, I wash dishes. It's not that I serve tables. My English was not good enough for that. But uh, I did whatever it took, and uh, uh, yep. I did whatever it took. Uh, if I had to clean bathrooms, I remember one day, and you see, I didn't even know how to clean bathrooms here, because in Brazil, not so much now, it's still some, but uh, at that time, when I had my kids young, in my 20s and 30s, Brazil still had that... Uh, uh, a, 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 a huge difference between the have and the have not, and uh, everybody could afford to have a maid. I always had maids, so I never cleaned the bathroom in my life. And then in the United States, I had to learn that. And there was so I was really tired, you know, tireless, doing all those things and cleaning whole houses and washing bathrooms and washing dishes and kitchens and pans and pots. And I was almost glad that I was not having to use my brain anymore. Okay, let me do the work. You know, I have to prove that I can do it. So that's one phase. I was not afraid to put my hands and my body to work. And I remember one day, I'm sorry. Uh, just what I, what I was yeah what I was hearing and and I think this is a really key point is that when we have a compelling enough reason when your vision is so clear this is the thing and you are so laser focused and you keep reinforcing to yourself that this is the thing this is the thing so that compelling reason in your case of of finding that spot where you could enroll in the master's program when that reason is strong enough you know, we can move mountains, we can scrub toilets, we can clean, we can serve, we can do so many things that we need to do when that reason, that vision is compelling enough. And it feels like you were really locked onto it. I was. I was, uh, um, I was blind to, every, to everything else around me, everything else. So uh, even as I met people in the hostel or even as my friend and her family invited me to go out, I didn't want to go out anywhere. I just wanted to focus. So I was going for interviews, asking for jobs, and tireless. And uh, one day, you know, and as I heard, I mean, even women, I mean, I, uh, I'm telling you, I had the most resistance to my dream, to my efforts from women, not from men. I, I, in my trial, in my tentatives, in my, uh, uh, you know, knocking on doors, one of the doors I knocked was a professor at the Ohio State University in the department I wanted to go. And he asked me several questions, how I was doing and what was the plan. And I kept trying to 
make up plans because I, you know my plan was to do right to 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 achieve and i was trying this i was trying that and he said it is good that you're not stopping thinking don't never stop thinking so it's good so uh, i i felt good because i was not i'm not like oh my gosh for me i'm tired no i was not i was focused on thinking all the time so we know yes. so we know that that's that that determination that relentlessness to a degree definitely paid off because you do have your masters and you've even you've even gone past that with the yes, qualifications I, well, yes exactly even um one day i mean i didn't know what else to do because i, I was not able to i i was i was not being able to find a, a, a job or a position or a scholarship that could allow me to study is expensive so one day I walked into the office of registration, in the, into the registration office at Ohio State, and there was this, this small man there, and I asked very humbly, you know, and hesitantly, I saw that he will say another no to me. <laughs> I said, how do I, what's, what do I have to do to apply for the master's program? He said, oh, you just fill this form here. It's $30. Why? So I filled the form, and that was, and I and I asked him, "Do you think I can? Do you think it's possible?" He said, "Of course, it's possible." So there was uh, because I knocked on some. I talked to so many people, so many people. Every here and there, it's not that they were the solution, but I heard small words, small phrases of, "Yes, you can." You know, and that kept me going. And uh, I had bought a little car, and that's an interesting story. May I? Is uh, am I using too much of the time? Or can I? <laughs> I think we can have a a, a quick sojourn into the into the car, and then I'd love to hear after that as to how the self leadership topic came into the path. Okay. Um, well, anyhow, so anyway, anyway, there are several uh, instances of difficulties, you know, um, through the process of even getting there and doing an essay, doing exams, and that's so, everything so far. So I, I did my master's in, in, in agriculture communication. I was a journalist in Brazil, specialized more with, with more of a specialty in agriculture. So I did, and I didn't know if I was be able if I would be able to go to the PhD and one of my professors said no you can you know it's just another process so I at that time I had granted myself a, a job which is another adventure uh, at Ohio State that would allow me to go to the PhD and I was reading articles trying to get an, an idea for me what I was going to do next and I came across the self-leadership and the same thing that I've been practicing all those years, self-observation, observation, self-rewarding, self-punishment to a degree, not punishing myself, but, you know, uh, if I didn't achieve what I planned to do, I would uh, uh, not do something I liked or not desire supreme, whatever. <laughs> but uh, I came across this and I said, that's me. That's me. And at that time, self leadership was not too, much, too well known, particularly at Ohio State. So my, my, my advisor asked, what is this? <laughs> what self leadership? So I saw that I started this study. I was the first one to study that topic at Ohio State. And uh, it is my life, the self leadership, the, all the theory really describes what I did without knowing, uh, just to just to go ahead with my life, to see, to do the best I could. No, it's, um, and so rec recognizing that and that moment of clarity you must have had when you, when you recognize within the article that you'd been practicing the uh, principles of self-leadership without even knowing. I'm just going to define it as, as I pulled out of the book because I think this, um, this sums it up and then I'd like to dig down into your interpretation of it. You know, the, the ability to influence yourself, to think and behave in ways that are consistent with who you are in the pursuit of goals and experiences that are important and relevant to you. 
So this self-leadership really has at the core the principles of, of, of self-determination, of, of the things that you want to do. Like when you were talking earlier, you said that you didn't necessarily have approval of those that were around you. You're a little bit of an island. This is the thing that I want to do and influencing your own behaviours and taking those massive actions to take you towards that goal of yours. So do you think that's where it starts is actually creating that that worthy goal, that thing that defines you or the next version version of you before you actually t start taking the steps towards it. I think you mentioned to me that um, being who we are, actually celebrating and, and committing to who we are is the most important step that we could take. So is that where we begin our own self-leadership journey? You know, uh, actually for me, this being who we are is actually where I am more now, more aware of everything that I am, you know, I'm part of a lot of things. I may be more quiet or sometimes I am more sociable. So being who we are is now. At that time, uh, I think self-knowledge for me was the most important thing I did. Initially by myself, you know, reading, I took advantage of the wonderful libraries in the United States and the wealth of books and articles and materials that they have. So I started the self-exploration to understand who I was. Because I, in the face of so many changes I had in my life in a short amount of time, I didn't know who I was anymore. Those old values were not valid anymore. You know, I didn't have the, 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 uh, the family cushion anymore. I didn't have any, anything. So who I was in face of nothing else of, of behind me. I didn't have a story. You know, here in Brazil, if you say your last name, maybe, you know, sometimes, oh, you're, you're descendants of, I don't know, Portuguese or Italian or the way you talk, uh, you are from a certain region of the country. So I had a history that my, what I am physically would tell. You know, I am, I'm, 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 I, I have a fair very com complexion, so I'm from the south of Brazil. I wouldn't be from the north where people are darker, for instance. So here I had uh, uh, pointers of who I was there, I didn't. And who I was there, I couldn't tell everybody my, chi my childhood, my parents, my grandparents. Well, I couldn't, I had to be able to express who I was in my attitudes, in my, in my words, and not long words, not long talks. So it's a self-examination. And I had the opportunity to, you know, attend, to uh, uh, um, stay around, to navigate around what I wanted, which is I wanted a university. I wanted to pursue higher education. So I, 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 I stayed around the university. I, I, I went into speeches or in events and I heard things and I look I, I heard uh, book citations I go after those books so and after I started finally my master's in 95 in the winter of 95 I was able I mean they, they pay a lot of attention to 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 self-discovery to tests to personality indicators and I was able to really dig deep in to myself and know, and know for myself, not from anybody else's reference, who, who I was and what is this new Anna would be. That so I, lo I, I love that point, Anna, that idea of recalibrating and redefining and rediscovering. This is who I was, but now I am ha making this conscious choice to, to explore who I am becoming. Who am I now? Who am I becoming? So if you were thinking of someone that was listening to us now and, and they are asking these questions of themselves, I feel a little lost. It's like I'm at a stage of life where there was the before, the things that I used to do, but I, I feel this pull into this new expression of who I am. So you'd encourage that woman to begin this self the self-exploration, expose yourself to new ideas, uh, discover your values because they've probably changed over time and other type things. So what, what other suggestions would you make if you've got a woman sitting here and saying, I'm not sure who I am anymore? 
what else could we do to make that to continue that discovery? Well, I, I you know, for me, if we get, particularly for women, this is so true, so true. Uh, if you get to a point that you're confused and upset and sad with your life, you probably have already changed inside. You are no longer the person that you thought you were. Um, and that should prompt you immediately. So let me find out if I'm, if I'm not yet settled, you know, as, as you transition, remember those galactic uh, um, uh, series where the, 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 um, the, oh my gosh, the spacious, spaceship is traveling. You maybe still are on the, on the move. You may, you, you may not yet arrive where you're going to be. You still start trying to know, do every test you can possibly make. You know, what, what your psychologists, they are usually the ones who can apply many um, personality tests and find out who you are. Maybe even your profession, what you have chosen 20 years ago is no longer what you want. You know, there, there should be other tools for you to develop yourself, even if it's not academic. You know, some uh, I have met, I was lucky enough to meet women, uh, older women in the United States who have changed to be artists, who went to learn uh, 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 carpentry and were building furniture or, you know, so there are several ways that you can manifest your new self. I find it very... For me, it's hard today to understand people who are friends with the same people from childhood. You see, because I lived, I lived 16 years in the United States. I lived too long. So when I came back to Brazil, not too long. Uh, I, I wish I, would, I could live more. Probably, I'll, hopefully, one day and I go back. But uh, when I came back, my friends were no longer. I couldn't find anybody else. Many people died or changed names, and I couldn't find them anymore. So uh, uh, I think I lost my train, of, of, um, my train of thought. But what I was saying is we are different people now. If it happens that you grow up the same way with a person who was your friend when you are 10, that's fine. But usually we become different. And we have to understand who is this new person. Because we are not coming from childhood and from a place of uh, ingenuity and purity, nothing. We come with a, 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 a body of knowledge, of families, of people, of human interaction, of business. And maybe we are some, somebody else. And we have to find that somebody else. I'm not sure if I answer it. Yes. No, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely hearing what you're saying and there's a couple of, um, I'll put in the show notes, there's a couple of tests, online tests in particular, personality tests, values and action tests from the, from Martin Seligman yes. and things that will pop up into the notes yes. and people can take that. Okay. Yeah, he's brilliant. So to have that sort of self-discovery, but I'm also hearing curiosity of to of those people that you were talking about who, you know, started um, carpentry and painting and other things. It's just allowing yourself to have curiosity and to follow it again and not be afraid that this might not work out. Just giving ourselves permission to explore is what I'm hearing. So self-knowledge is a big part of self-leadership. What other aspects do you think the, is important? Okay, courage. I, I would say simplicity, and uh, when I say simplicity is, I mean being willing to lose what you have, so not being attached to things. If you have a certain level of comfort, you have to be willing to let go, because you need to explore what you are. I mean, Angela, for me, that was the way. That, I'm not saying there, there is no other ways. For me, the way was let go of every, you know of you what you believe you need to live you know give yourself the chance to try something here and fail and try something else not everybody maybe can do that you know can uh, being uh, take out of yourself you know the need for everything and so you know courage uh, uh, the willingness to let go of the comforts that you may have, be willing to face um, uncertainty, uh, 
be able to feel fear and say, okay, uh, this, uh, despite the fear, I'll keep going. Um, for you to have an idea, I when I left Brazil, I had, you know, what everybody else has. And even to this day, I'm back to Brazil, it has been six, seven years. I still don't have everything I used to have. But, you know, we have towels, tab towel, table towels. I mean, I'm, I'm going to the basic, right? A lot of dishes and all sorts of glasses and clothes and uh, you name it. We have a lot of nitty gritty, small little things. And when I went to the United States, I had three bags, three suitcases. And I went to the airport, and I realized I could not carry three suitcases. I went to the women's bathroom. I took everything from that, I, not everything. I left one, one whole suitcase, one full suitcase in the bathroom. I let go of it, and I, because I had two hands, I had to be able to carry my two suitcases. So when I arrived in Ohio, so this is an example of letting go. Uh, this, the parents of this woman, friend of mine, uh, agreed to, for me to leave my, my suitcases on their home. So I had only a backpack. I lived, my life was a backpack. And I was turning 40, very, for, very shortly. And that gave me such a freedom because I have nothing else to do. And so, the courage. So what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing there is it's almost like a metaphor, Anna, of, of letting go of who you think you are so you can become who you can be. And that can be that can be scary. It's like letting go of the trapeze before the next one is visible. Yes. So it's that transition yes. period that you spoke about. Well, I'm I'm interested with this idea. So we've got the um, the self knowledge, we've got the courage, we've got the simplicity. You've spoken often about self awareness. What about self talk? Because there'd be a bit of a battle going on in your head when I say you, yeah. I mean women in general, about who am I to think I can do this or this is too scary or how, how foolish am I to, to change things at this stage of life? Why don't I just stay with the status quo? How does one with the principles of self-leadership manage that sort of internal chatter that's going on? So this is interesting because you, you may be able to see in our book, in, in Andrew and mine, my book, Self Leadership, that there is a part when I talk, I, I touch on spirituality. And the reason I didn't explore it more is because Andrew and I were collaborating, and Andrew didn't think it was uh, a place for that. But uh, even in my, uh, my doctorate and my postdoc research, I explored this topic the spiritual, spiritual part. Um, I, uh, <laughs> in my case, I read passages of uh, the New Testament and I tried to see how it would fit me, you know, and, uh, and I, for, I mean, my research showed that people who have some sort of spirituality, it doesn't matter what religion, which religion is it, but, 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 but some connection with some, you know, uh, the forces, the energy around us, whatever give us, whatever make us connect with one another. See, you and I are talking and you live in Australia. I collaborated with Andrew in this book and we never even met. He lives in Singapore. He's a British, he lived in Australia, and now he's in Singapore. We never met and we did this. So there is something that we don't understand. And I'm not saying uh, what kind of God or angels or whatever, but there is something. And for me, that self-talk was getting my strength out of this. I, I, and I read several books, too, you know, in the libraries. And uh, they were saying, if you can dream of something, you can do it. And I read a quote, and I'm so sorry, I don't remember who, whose quote it was. He said, that said, uh, if you dream about something, you know, if you manage something for you, give the first, take the first step. The first step will make the universe conjure to help you achieve. 
And that, I mean, with that in mind, there were several days that I was walking on the Ohio State University campus and looking at that beautiful blue sky with the American flag out of some uh, buildings, uh, 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 you know, uh, thought. And I said, it has to be. It has to be. I am here. I'm already here. I came. Why is it that I cannot? Uh, do you know so for me that it that it, it is how it it happened i don't know if uh, uh, it's okay to mention the spirituality in the conversation. Uh, but uh, i think i think spirituality is a part of, it's something that we tend to open to in my experience we open to as we move on further in life it i don't know it, it, it almost feels as though we become ready to embrace that if we haven't embraced it earlier we start to explore it and i loved how you allowed that that definition of spiritual connection to be nice and roomy like a, it's got lots of room for whatever your faith is but that concept of that you were a part of something bigger than you i think is is essential and personally i feel that our next chapters you know, where the real richness is comes at that intersection between contribution and fulfillment. So it's something, as you were saying so clearly when we, when we began our conversation, that you were so clear on how you wanted to develop and what you were focused on. That was your fulfillment part. But then you've turned full circle and you've turned your feeling of fulfillment and your experiences into contribution via this very book, that I'm holding in my hands, but so many other things that you've done as well. You're a trailblazer, you know, to have that, to have that determination to achieve what you achieved. That shows another person that what is possible for them with their own definition, with their own decision as to what that thing is, it's possible to make it happen. We don't have to have the same goal or the same dream as you. We have our own dream. But our ability to lead ourselves towards it doesn't change. It doesn't change. Yeah. So I think that's really important. It is. It is. Uh, you, you you said it very well, Angela. Because um, uh, during my time uh, in my research, I had the opportunity to talk to several women. In fact, there was a book I was trying to uh, write, but you know I couldn't find subjects enough to write stories enough. Maybe. That's the opportunity. If you know, we can write something together. But something like interviewing women who have changed their lives so completely, and if they have done it alone. Because for me, if you do, if you change your life with lots of support, you're not really, you know, you're still comfortable somehow. And I think that for us to let go of some things and traditions and. Uh, uh, values sometimes that hold us down you have to be extremely courageous and just go and brave the wilderness yourself I actually saw you mention something from Brené, Brené Brown yes <laughs> yes I read her book I even had here just before I, I we came online I saw oh, I should have I should have gotten my Brené Brown book but it, it's something about the wilderness right braving the wilderness yes, right? braving the wilderness yes. absolutely very good book very good book and yeah, wonderful so I saw that you had that in your in your site <laughs> but yes but um, uh, you know it, it, it takes it, it it takes I'm not sure if I can say it. I take balls. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. I agree with it completely. It does. It does take balls. Yeah. Good. For us to, to step into this new possibility of, of who we can be in our next chapters, it does take enormous balls and courage, balls full of courage, without a doubt. And that's why these conversations, Dana, are so important. The women that I love to, to bring on to interview on this podcast are women that have stepped into what's true for them. It doesn't mean that we have to take, you know, what's our definition of what's true and, and force it onto another person. That's very much that inward journey that you went through as well, that self-knowledge. Who am I now? What's important to me now? Um, and I think when we, and that the values and action link that I'll put up is so important for women to take is I actually think our values are quite enduring, but we tend to push ourselves down the priority totem pole until we get to certain stages of life when we go, you know what, I, I'm first equal. I'm not better than or less than the people in my world, but it's time to prioritize the things that are important to me. 
And, and I, I make no apology for that's what I encourage women to do. A lot of the people in my world, you know, business owners, they have it, they're expressing this contribution through the lens of business, but they may have kept that business small or they may have not really had the courage to do the thing through that lens of the business that they really want to do. And it's, it's time now. It is time. So that's when you were talking about courage as being incredibly important. Ordinary courage, as Brené would say, not like battlefield courage, but courage yeah. to take the next step in our own lives. That's how it yes. feels. Yes, and, 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 and risk one step. You know, yes. go one step. One step. And one thing that for me was uh, also, today I say interesting, but at that time was, oh, my gosh, man. You know, it, it was an, an oh my gosh moment. Was that um, uh, the way people define you in your past life? I, I say this is my second life, you know, but in the past life, the way people define you are no longer you. The most difficult thing was for my family to understand that I was another person. They kept yeah. referring to somebody that I was no longer. And uh, at some point, I said, I won't convince them. It's just with my attitude. Okay, you want to think that is fine? Just look. <laughs> just, <laughs> just look at me. <laughs> you know, and I kept going. And, and this is one thing that for many women, for women, is usually it's very scary. Yeah. You don't have people, uh, uh, um, how can I say, confirming who you are. You know, do you remember me? And that person was a child. I did this and this and that. Sometimes you have to also let go of people who hold you into someone you don't want to be anymore or part of what you don't want to be anymore. I think at that age, this 40s that you mentioned in our conversation just before the recording is, uh, is, is so true. It's like uh, uh, <laughs> Having, uh, giving yourself permission to be someone else, explore what else you want to do. Is that part in life? You know, it's kind of middle of life. It's just middle age. As, you know, uh, you're 40. Maybe you are going to live until 80s. I wish I wouldn't because I think it's too much. You don't have quality of life anymore, you know, if you don't have all the perfect health and everything else. But uh, 40s, you have to be what you want to be. Some, some people, men and women, never face that challenge, but some of us have, do. And some of us who have that itching inside that we are not happy, we, uh, we try, we want to be something else, we, we are not complete, we have to go after it. One phrase I usually, I, I gave a lot of speeches in the United States because of, you know, my story. And uh, when people ask me, how did you do it? How did you find the courage and the strength and, you know, the resilience? And I said, well, well, the first thought that came to my mind, and, and this has been very consistent over the years, is what was the choice? How could I not? And uh, I'd like to tell women, if they are feeling that they need to do something, you know, they won't be happy if they don't. Try something different. Oh, Anna, that is the perfect, perfect natural close to our conversation. You know, when people say, how did you do it? And you answer, how could I not? You know, I think you, you've hit the nail on the head there that someone who's listening who has that, that itch inside, that feeling of discontent, that feeling of that there more is possible, that feeling of if I don't try this, I'll always wonder. You know, there's an expression in, in our part of the world, and perhaps you may have heard it too, and, it, and it's, um, it's almost a, a warning. Don't die with the music still inside of you. And that's what this feels like. That's what this feels like. It's whatever that thing is that's calling you, allow yourself to take that first step, to start that exploration, to take that yeah. little risk because who knows yeah. what it may blossom into. Oh, Anna, yeah. thank, you, thank you so much for sharing this story with us today. You know, for, me to, for me to be able to hear the, the massive amounts of courage that it did take, but 
it was about that self-courage, that, that self-knowledge, that self-leadership that made you take step by step by step. And that's the piece that is inspiring, that you decided to, to chase the dream, your personal dream, your next chapter. Nobody else's but yours. And that is hugely, hugely inspirational to me. Uh, I'd, I'd like just to add one thing. I know you don't have any more time, but if women think about, oh my gosh, my children, my daughter, my daughter today is 40, and she's so thankful and I, uh, for me to have done what I did. And I was consumed, and many times I'm, I still am today because I left them. They were like in their teen years. Today, my daughter thanks me. Mm. Uh, she, she saw it. Today she sees it, and years ago she also saw it anyhow. But just think that you can be an example of courage and change. You know, there's no change without pain and difficulties, but it's possible. That's, I hope everybody can achieve all they want to. Everybody who is listening here and who is not. I love that. I love that idea that you can be an example of courage and change. That's fabulous. I have a 16 year old daughter. And that would be one of my absolute goals and ambitions to show her that what she wants to make of her life is possible, however she defines that. So thank you for being an example to your daughter and to us as well with your story. Now, if people want to connect with you, Anna, what is the best way of going about that? Is it through LinkedIn? Or I'll obviously put the links to the self-leadership book because we only touched on the principles lightly, this book that you wrote um, along with Andrew Bryant. But I'll certainly put the links in the show notes for someone who wants to, to dig deeper into the concept of self-leadership because I think it's so vital. But to, to connect with you personally, is uh, LinkedIn the best Option. Oh, you can please uh, give them my email. You have my email. No Perfect. Problem. I'll pop that. I'll pop that onto um, the the bio at the bottom of the page as well. So again, thank you so much. Is there any parting words that you would like to finish the call off with? Oh, I I know. I'd say that uh, your connection, your your reaching out to me was part of the magic, you know, part of what the universe conjures to do for you when you take steps that are difficult. I can't believe I'm, you know, we are talking so from so far away that we connect in such a deep level that are women going through the same things over there as I see here and as I did back 20 years ago. So it's beautiful and uh do if the first if we do if we take the first step is a half of the way. Oh, I read this somewhere too. The first step of a long journey is half of the way. So uh, thank you so much, Angela, for this opportunity. All your your friends, your listeners, your 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 fellow women, you know, your children and the children of our women, everybody. Um, thank you so much for this connection and good luck don't give up good luck in your journey absolutely thank you Anna thank and you. to you and to you, my lovely listener, I hope that these messages that you have heard from today's conversation land in your heart as well and provide you with that little dose of courage that just has you take that first step. Now, that first step is going to look different from you, for you than it does from everybody else, and that's exactly as it should be because this is your journey. This is your next chapter. This is the, the new direction that you are moving in that is going to lighten your heart so as Anna said so many times during our conversation if there is that feeling that there is more waiting for you then you deserve to explore that and as you've also heard this feeling that you have it's universal we are all experiencing it in our different ways right around the world so I am hugely excited to see what will unfold for you in your next chapter thank you for spending the time here today make sure that you go to the podcast and check the show notes where you will find the links to not only this wonderful book which opened this whole conversation but also those tests about how to check it with that self-exploration the values the personality styles and lots of other 
things that I will find and pop onto the page that I believe will help you in your journey. So have a wonderful day. Thank you again for being here. And I will talk to you again very soon on the next episode of the Your Next Chapter podcast. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Your Next Chapter podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, I'd love you to share it, perhaps leave a review in iTunes. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're looking for your own business breakthrough at the moment, then I've got something special for you. Visit AngelaRaspis.com forward slash breakthrough guide. That e-guide takes you through the four key gaps to close that may be stopping you from reaching the next level in your business. I hope it's extremely helpful and I look forward to talking with you again on the next episode.